big news this week is um, uh, we had some uh, primaries. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, broadly speaking, last week, not so great uh, for, or I should say a week and a half ago, I guess, not so great for Progressive. This week, a, a better one. Uh, and and particularly also uh, on the questions of 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 diversity, and we'll, we'll go through that. But you know, if we have a general trend that is happening, it is that uh, women and um, and and I guess um, LGBTQ people and. Um, and minorities are are doing particularly well this year as opposed to maybe any in the past and i think it's a a function of a of an electorate uh, a, a specific segment of the electric that has always been there uh and has shown up but is showing up in um you know near record numbers well i agree and i mean this is very very important for democrats by the way i mean that this coalition that we're seeing come out to vote is the, 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 the Democratic coalition of the future, and, and the party must be in a position to uh, keep them in, engaged, enthusiastic, and, and voting if they, if they want to be able to save this country uh, from what's been going on. So, I mean, this is actually a very good sign, and it, it goes beyond just the, you know, the, the anti-Trump vote, which I think is obviously it's, you know, the overriding message of everything for Democrats, which is they, they are desperate to put some kind of a, uh, you know, some kind of a guardrail up against what's going on with uh, with Trump in the White House and what then the Republican, you know, obeisance to him. So, I mean, that's there. But this the fact that it's being done by this particular coalition of people that, you know, it's I mean, large numbers of women, I mean, record numbers real record numbers of women. It may even end up being 50% of the, I mean, I think it's like at 48% right now, uh, of the primary winners have been women. I mean, right. this is this is huge. It's, it's, a, it's an absolute explosion on that. And then there's everything, I mean, from African Americans to Hispanics to Muslim women. The first Somali uh, won on Tuesday in... Um, in, in uh, Michigan yeah. uh, or in Minnesota. Minnesota, sorry. You know, I mean, these are. This is a very important thing. There's a transgender uh, uh, nominee for governor, um, and the, you know, this is this is the future, and it's extremely gratifying to me to see this anti-Trump, um, you know, r- r- surge or whatever the blue wave, whatever, which I think we kind of assumed or hoped against hope would happen, but that it's happening this way. I mean, I think that that is really a great, great sign for the future. And, you know, ideologically, the party is, is you know, it's center, it's mostly going to be center left to left. I mean, there really is very right. little conservative, you know, uh, representation in the, in the party anymore at all. And the center left side is, you know, seems to be pretty open to most of the things that, you know, the left wants, at least in some level or another. I'm sure there will be battles. This is the Democratic Party. But as I've said before here, I think that having this big tent with that's very diverse and that has a number of people from different uh, backgrounds and, and even, you know, some divergence in ideology, that's the sign of a healthy party. It's a really good problem to have, uh, to have a tent so big that it can accommodate all of this, all of this difference and that we're able to, that, that, you know, they are able to sort of run, um, on these, uh, uh, you know, and it's not that people say, oh, they don't have any issues. That's just not true. It's not true at all. Um, all the reporting from in the districts and in the states, is that they're running on a whole set of issues, yes. uh, mostly to do with things like, you know, health care and, you know, yep. preserving Social Security, free college. I mean, things that are of real uh, importance to average voters. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to get, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm paranoid. I don't want to get too enthusiastic here. But I have to say that, that this, this is looking to me like the sign of a healthy party that is going way beyond just the resistance, that this is actually a, co- co- you know, a coalescing of the majority of Americans into uh, something that is actually a governing party. Yeah, I agree. And, um, and, and just, you know, uh, briefly, uh, you know, 
again, broad strokes, numbers, uh, Democrats in Minnesota turned out about uh, 585,000 votes, uh, Republicans 320,000. I mean, that is, you know, that is, uh, that's a big disparity uh, yep. in Minnesota. Wisconsin, 540, 540,000, Republicans 456. And that is a huge disparity, particularly, you know, we got to remember 2016, uh, Clinton loses by what, like 10,000, 11,000 votes? Yep. <clears throat> I mean, that, this is, these are big numbers. Connecticut, uh, where you would imagine 211,000 versus 142,000. In Vermont, 57,000 Democrats versus 35,000 Democrats. I mean, this is... These are very high uh, turnout numbers, and these are all uh, these are gubernatorial um, uh, primaries. So, you know, this is uh, obviously people are coming out to vote for a governor and they vote down ticket. Um, But like you say, this is this is very encouraging stuff. I mean, this is uh, and and you don't want to get out ahead of yourself and you don't want to uh, get out in front of your skis. But the the bottom line is. If you or I were to sit down and say, let's let's write up a script of what we want things to look about. Best case scenario. Right. It, it would look a lot like this. <laughs> right? like, you know, maybe there's a there's a race here or two that you would want uh, to win, but it would look a lot like this. I mean, just uh, getting specifics in terms of what happened last night. You mentioned the uh, the country now has the first transgender nominee uh, for governor in the history of the country. Um, Christine Halquist, I don't think she's going to. Well, look, who knows? But um, she's running against a fairly popular uh, incumbent Republican governor up in, um, in in Vermont. But it's a big deal to have a nominee for governor, a transgender nominee. It's a big deal for uh, for transgender folk all across the country. And I think it's a big deal for the Democratic Party, too, to be able to sort of say, like, you know, we um, we are helping in uh, protecting transgender folks and expressing their rights. And and what's also good about these candidates is they're all they're progressive. Too. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is not um, uh, strictly identity politics playing out. They are representing some real political change. Probably not a huge coincidence, but you mentioned um, that in Minnesota we saw, uh, rep- uh, you know, uh, state rep Ilan Omar. She is a Somali American. She's also very progressive. Uh, she, along with Michigan's Rashida T- Tlaib. Um, are probably going to be the first two Muslim uh, women in the the House, and uh, Talib is you know is DSA. So we're talking about two very progressive uh, women. All right, we've got a lot more to talk about. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, Digby, stick around. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. <laughs> 